What's going on? How y'all doing today? So I got the chance. I don't know if it's a chance or not. I saw that train wreck called that Salt and Pepper movie, which was on Lifetime. Oh, Lord. Where do I start? Now, Salt and Pepper, to me, is one of the most important groups, male or female, in hip hop. Yeah, I said it because I'm going to tell you something. Female MCs rapping back then, and they came out in 86, right after Run DMC Houdini. And I can go on and on at that time period in that era. And they made their presence felt. And they could spit on the mic. They were bad. And they were attractive. Uh, charismatic. They had the whole... They was on point. To put in perspective, all the way up to shoot when they did with uh, Invoke. They had hits all the way up to 94. At a time when... Being a rapper, you weren't exactly going to be seen as turning the corner another decade, per se. Because I can tell you a lot of rappers that didn't make out of one era, they were already a greatest hits package by this third album, fourth album. So Salt and Pepper had legs. They definitely had, you know, could go on. But anyway, um, the movie, where do I start? Well, see, first of all, if you don't include Spinderella in the mix... That's like Jam Master J not being included with Run DMC. That don't even count. It's just not the same. You know. You know. You know. It, it's just like, it, you know, um, Grandmaster Flash Rod Miller Mill. It, you got to have all the parts. That's how you identify. That's how you signify. This film looks like it was shot on a chips and uh, soda pop budget like some BT would do. And Lifetime supposed to be more hip than that. But then again, you saw that train wreck, which was the Aaliyah movie. And this one, it might be even worse. And the sad part, I think Mario Van Peoples, who directed Panther, New Jack Swing, New Jack City. I was because it's been like, I haven't listened to New Jack Swing late, but New Jack City, as well as an actor, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, directed this. I wouldn't want to claim title. I'd say you give it, give it a ghost name. Don't claim this mess. I'm like, come on now. You got to do better than this. And the LL Cool J looked like DJ Khaled. I had to stop and look twice. I said, <laughs> it was so much funny and wrong. And just, they got the Herbie Love book right. Arsenio, some other parts right. But this was a clonker. This was Corn Fest 101. Salt and Pepper, if they, if they, uh, Sign off on this. They'll be ashamed of themselves for this mess. I mean, they left out a lot of details. For instance, talking about the industry and the politics and the kind of deals they signed. Because Herbie Lovebug wrote the majority of their tracks. How they got MTV Airplay. How when they did Let's Talk About Sex and they were talking about condoms. That was a big issue at the time. And they were empowering soul sisters, okay? They were... You know, they had substance, they had crossover, they had incredible appeal. They were, you know, a rap version of before TLC, but with songs, they had a career, you know. I mean, Push It was a crossover phenomenon, which is still felt to this day. We talking almost 35 years later, Push It is still strong, you know. And, um, you know, I still remember when they came out in 86, I still remember when it was rocking... They were rocking uh, f basketball gear back when they came out with the Celtics and the Rockets because I was the NBA Finals at the time. And um, they always were on point, you know, like they, they came out right. No other female rap group that I can think of. None of them have seen them. They, they, got, they got impact, for real. Now, if you take the sexism out of the equation, you got to put Salt and Pepper as one of the 10, 15 best rap groups ever but having said all that this movie is one of the worst waste of film i've ever seen you know it should have been a mini series of dunce it should have been done like american soul did on on uh bt about soul training don Cornelius, etc but salt and pepper they got wasted this thing was just <laughs> i don't know what that mess was you know salt and pepper deserve better than that when you consider the impact what they did you know, I remember when Tramp came out back in 86. I had, I'm doing this off of sight and memory because, you know, all that. And you got, your, and the fact is that they married a film almost 40 years later. Tells you the impact they had, but this was not it. This, 
I don't know what this was. It was like a bad after school special strung out on crack or something. This ain't it. But anyway, uh, give me your thoughts and takes if you've seen the Salt and Pepper Lifetime movie. Anyway, I, I, but I would tell you, you may be wasting a couple hours of your life watching that mess. I mean, that was, that was dreadful. And if it ain't got Spinderella in it, I don't care about their differences. Common Sense says, yo, that's, your, that's how y'all know. Yeah, she just as important as salt and pepper. So you got to tell the whole story. You know, it's nice about the kid and play at Sears and Martin Lawrence and all that. And, you know, little side dudes. But you got to have more Spinderella in there. She was very much integral part of your group. It wasn't like somebody that came on, uh, you know, late in the picture. You know, and you said, okay, we'll throw that in there. You know, it's very much a part of you. So anyway. Please hit that like, hit that subscribe. I welcome thoughts and comments and feedback, and I do respond. Wash your hands, keep your mind clear, watch out for another. And um, if they're going to put out a story, tell the whole story. Don't sugarcoat it. This one ain't even have sugar. The sprinkles fell off before it had a chance to stick. This is not the proper way to talk about the salt and pepper story. I'm out. Peace.